Welcome to this new Flight Simulator update movie. Surprise, surprise, it's time for another update. Not a world update, not a sim update. No, it's a nav update and world hub updates. Uh, it has been released today, uh, a few hours back, and it will update a few things. First of all, it will update the navigation data. And the navigation data is critical because if you're using uh, tools like SimBrief, you always want to have the latest uh, RAC cycle. In this case, RIC or RAC cycle 2408, uh, which is now available and it will be automatically installed when you're starting Flight Simulator, right? So when you're starting Flight Simulator, it will prompt you to install an update. And after that, you're having the latest RAC cycle and you can benefit from that using, uh, I would say the third party uh, flight planning tools. Uh, keep an eye on my channel because I will record some new videos about how to plan flights using uh, third party products. So not the world map from Flight Simulator, but third party products. And not likely SimBrief because that one has been discussed uh, a lot. But maybe we're going to look at some other ones which can be used for that. In addition to that, there are some new updates to the airports. And those are part of the World Hub submissions. Remember that in a previous video, we discussed the World Hub submission tool, where you as, I would say, community member can provide feedback about airports, uh, provide, I would say, improvement for airports. And uh, currently the, I would say, beta or alpha version is closed and it will be reopened somewhere in 2025. Likely it has to do something with the release of Flight Simulator 2024. But going through this list, there were some pretty interesting airports, not smaller ones, but also bigger ones. For example, St. John's International, Dublin International, Green Bay Austin Strabo International, right? And those are just a few to name out. Here we've got Sacramento International. And you can see that, I would say, uh, besides the bigger ones, also some smaller ones are there, right? So some airstrips, but also some one with special uh, ICAO codes. And if we scroll the list, we will see that we're moving around the world, right? We're going from the US to, I would say, Eastern Europe. Also a lot of updates there, which is really cool. So thanks for those community members who are developing and are helping Asobo and Microsoft to improve these airports. And as we can see, the list is pretty long this time. Uh, right, so you can, we can see Yuri, Gumrak, uh, Sochi, uh, Severny, so a lot of airports, including also some international airports in that area, right? The Gagarin International Airport is there and some of the cool ones. Now, as mentioned in the release notes already on the top, how to get the update is relatively easy. So you can simply start Flight Simulator. It will prompt you to install the update and then you should be good to go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start Flight Simulator and then install the update. Uh, once I'm back uh, and the update is installed, we're going to do some more investigation to see if they updated some other stuff which they didn't tell us. So I will pause the recording and we'll be back once the update has been installed. And we're back. It has installed the update. It didn't take that much time to be honest. It was still a pretty big update, but it was okay. So let's see what it has changed because that's always something interesting to figure out what is does it have changed, right? Uh, we don't, sometimes I would say it's a bit Clear what has changed based on release notes, but it's always cool to validate it. So we go to the official and one store folder, and that's the folder where both Asobo stores all the default content as well as all the stuff which has been bought by the marketplace. And we can run uh, this nice commandlet. I'm going to first run this one, which will give us the overview of the folders being updated. And there we see the FSNF folder, the generic airports folder, as well as the AI traffic. And the last one we discussed already several times. They're doing something with that folder. They're changing something. But again, it's pretty hard to figure out what they change because, of course, I also didn't create a backup. So that's a tip for me next time. I will create a backup of this folder to see what's going on there because I'm really curious. Now, if you want to see which files have been updated inside these folders, and you already saw it, you can add the minus recurse, which will show us which individual files have been updated. So first it will show you the folders which have been updated. And after that, it will iterate to each folder and then will show you uh, which files have been updated. And you can see a lot of BGL files. 
right? Which is kind of expected. So you see here, for example, uh, the uh, AT, ATX, the NAX, uh, multiple ones. I'm not sure what the, I would say, name convention is for these files. That's something which could be interesting. But and you can see that, I would say, the last part, that's the RAC cycle, right? That's in a world folder. It's the RIC cycle uh, dot BGL, some boundary alert, some classes, some uh, danger MOA prohibited, restricted training warning, a lot of cool stuff. And if we would scroll, I think it's almost to the top, uh, we would see the uh, folder which contains the AI functionality, which will take some time, of course, because you can see it's a crazy long list. But again, it's good, right, that they update all this stuff. So a lot of NAX and VX. More and more and more and more. And I would say scrolling like crazy. And then eventually we should go somewhere on the top, which should show us which uh, files have been updated of that secret folder. Uh, more folders. Uh, let me zoom out. Let me zoom out and use this nice glider, right? Much easier. So we're going to do that. Uh, then we're going to zoom in again. And here we can see the files which have been updated in the uh, world traffic one. The AI traffic uh, folder contains the scenery world. That one contains the uh, files itself. So FS10 aircraft types and uh, two uh, BGL files, one for the aircraft and one for the boats. So they've got a separate uh, BGL files for that, which are containing the gra graphics uh, things for the graphic items, if I'm correct, as well as some other parameters for those uh, types of, uh, in this case, vehicles. The aircraft types contain some static data. We looked at it last time. Uh, I could open it now, but I'm still trying to figure out, okay, what they're changing. I do expect that the most changes will happen here, but again, uh, I'm not sure. So I'm going to create a script, which will, I'd say, capture these files so I can easily com compare it next time. They're deciding to release, uh, I would say, an update like this. So here ends this video where we looked at what has been updated according to the release notes, as well as what has been updated uh, according to the real stuff, which means using PowerShell. And based on that, we discovered again that they did something with the AI traffic. Again, it will remain a mystery. Likely we need to submit a question to Asobo. Maybe we can do it for the next developer web uh, webcast. And ask them, okay, hey, what are you updating in uh, those files? Because it still is interesting. Uh, again, here ends this video. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, then consider to use the like button. If you've got questions or comments, then feel free to post them in the comment box below. And if you want to stay up to date about new videos I'm posting, then make sure that you're subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.